Laura Dunstan, and I work in GBCA's marketing department as the marketing communications assistant, and I'm here with Lynn Algrant. Can you please introduce yourself, Lynn? Hi, everyone. I'm Lynn Algrant. I'm vice president of planning, development, and communications. And I'm just going to uh, let Lynn talk to us about all of the many things that she knows about the census, all of the history, all of the fun facts that she has just to share with you guys for anybody who may be looking for, uh, you know, information about the census she's here to share. So, so yes, I am a self-professed census nerd. Um, I, I, I love the census. I love everything about the census. Um, a number of years ago, my mother and I decided to work on our family genealogy and most of what we were able to pull together, we got from census records. And so I've poured through census records in my family all the way back to uh, slavery and emancipation. Um, and so the amateur historian in me loves census data and census information. And so part of why I want to encourage everyone, we count, it's important that we're counted, resources, representation, all those things, but also history demands that we be counted. Um, 72 years from now, when the 2020 census is, um, is made public, our ancestors, our forebears, are going to be able to go and see where we lived and what right. we were doing, right? And so there are some censuses, right, that are fascinating. I mentioned earlier the first time that enslaved people were actually named in the census was 1850. Prior wow. to that, it was just male and age or female and age. But right. in 1850, they named all of the enslaved people. And so if you kind of know where to look on Ancestry.com, you kind of have a name and an area, you may in fact find your ancestors um, and where they were. Um, they uh, in, and then there are all kinds of like interesting fun facts. So one thing I have found, uh, the enslaved people in Bergen County, New Jersey uh, in the 1850 census. Um, and there were um, in 19, in the 19, 40 census, one of the questions was, do you have a radio set in your home? Because Franklin Delano Roosevelt wanted to make sure that when he did his fireside chats, mm -hmm. that he could reach everybody with a radio, right? Um, right. Do you have running water? Um, by the 1970s, they were asking whether or not you had a television in your home. Uh, so there's a lot of really fascinating things that we can learn about what mattered to us as a United States in different right. periods of time. Um, and what kinds of questions did we ask um, on the census because it mattered to, to us as a nation in some sort right. of way? Right, interesting, really, really interesting. Cause I know right now uh, we base our, you know, they base the census on what matters to us now. So it's interesting to be able to look back and be like, oh, wow. Like you said, they were able to ask, did you, did you have a radio? Did you have a television? That's really right. interesting. I was really disappointed in 2010. I had hoped that one of the census questions would be, do you have internet access at home? Right. Um, you know, and it wasn't, and it wasn't on that census. It's not on this census either, unfortunately, right. but now we understand how important it is, right? Okay. To know where, where um, people have internet access and where they don't, right? right? And so now we're trying to scramble around and figure out how to make sure that all school children can be digitally included now that we go to school um, remotely. And we're discovering, right, that a lot of people don't have internet access or it's not um, affordable in their community. And now what happens, right, when we're in the middle of this remote learning pandemic? Right, right, exactly. That would have definitely been a really good question to add to the census, but. Yeah, we didn't know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> How could we have? <laughs> How could we have? Yeah, exactly. Uh, are, is there anything else that you want to add? Lee? Any other? I'll, just, I'll tell a fun, if, if I can, I'm going to tell a, like an ancestor story. All right. So we knew in my family, there was, um, there were sort of family stories that were handed down, right? And we knew that my great grandfather, John Solon Harwell, left Tennessee and went to Kansas but we didn't know exactly when, maybe there was a murdered overseer type person um, and that's why they had to leave so quickly. We weren't really sure. Mm -hmm. And so I was pouring through the census and I there was the 1890 census, um, the original documents burned in a fire, uh, a huge fire in Kansas. And so um, you don't get the ancestry.com sort of printouts of it, but it's still on microfiche. And so I'm right. sitting in a library going through the microfiche machine. 
And I finally found my great grandfather. He was 16 years old in 1890, wow. living with his sister and her husband. And so it's a little bit confusing, but so he was J.S. Harwell and his nephew was um, John Leatherman and they were both 16 years old. So his mother wow. and his sister were pregnant at the same time. They yeah. both had sons named John, right? And wow. J.S. Harwell and John Leatherman were best friends, uncle and nephew, but same right. age and best friends. Wow. Well, when I found him in the census, I sent an email to my dad saying, Eureka, I have found him. And I described this household. And my dad comes to my house the next morning and he says, I haven't thought about that name since I was a little boy. And when he was eight years old, they were his dad was taking a summer course in Colorado. And he said, come on, I want you to go meet somebody. And they knocked on a door and the man who opened the door looked just like my dad's grandfather. And that man was John Leatherman. So wow. J.S. Harwell and John Leatherman left Tennessee. I still haven't found the dead white guy, but I'm still looking. They <laughs> leave Tennessee, they get to Kansas, and my great grandfather, J.S. Harwell, um, sees a woman through the church window and says, oh, she's to be my wife. And so he stayed in Kansas and married her. Mm -hmm. And John Leatherman went on to Colorado. And we were able to put this whole thing together because I That's found amazing. him on the census. That's amazing. <laughs> Make you want to go so down. out your census forms. <laughs> History demands it. <laughs> right. History demands it. <laughs> History yeah. definitely demands it. Definitely. Well, thank you so much for sharing, Lynn. Of course. That was really thank great. You, Kiara. I love that. <laughs> Fill out your census. Fill out your census. Yes. You count. It's, you count. You, count, you matter, everybody counts, everybody counts. Everybody counts. So thank you so much again, Lynn. That will conclude the end of our series. That was our series part four, and that's the end of it. Thanks for tuning in, everyone. Thanks, everybody.